Hi, good afternoon, good night, welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, hi. Um, you're welcome to subscribe, share, like, engage with my subscribers, anything you like. Today I wanted to talk about the power that some pastors make out that they have to their congregation. In Zambia, um, I think it happened a couple of months ago, but they're recently reporting on it, 28 people took a liquid called Zik, Jik, and it's equivalent of um, it's the equivalent of bleach, and they died. Twenty eight of them, and it led me to it led me to wonder what is it about pastors that influence people so much? Pastors, um, religious leaders, cult leaders, whatever they are, what is it about them? that people feel as though they have supernatural powers and can heal them. Apparently, this pastor told them that if they drink this jick, which is equivalent to bleach, it will wash away all the demons inside, and they believed. Keen over and dead, 18 seriously injured. Among them were doctors and nurses. So I don't know if the doctor told them what was in the concoction, because I can't imagine nurses and doctors taking that concoction knowing that it's bleach or the equivalent to bleach and dying. It led me to believe, um, you know, how people don't realise that they have the same power and the same influence within them that the pastors do. It always gets me when you go to a church and it's always the congregation listening to the pastor, being fed by the pastor. The congregation can never ask any questions. They don't participate unless it's to go up to the front and get prayed for or whatever it is they do. And there's so many different denominations, different churches, and they all do things differently. But the fact of the matter is the congregation, for some reason, puts their ultimate faith in pastors and allows the pastors to dictate their conduct, what they do, how they do it, how much they pay and all of those things. So when you find destructive pastors like this, pastors who are who are not qualified, obviously, you know, for them to be given out bleach, what kind of qualification do you have? And I understand from Dr. Mumby Nobody's been arrested, but that's murder. Or manslaughter if you didn't know that it was going to kill them. But at the very least, that person should be arrested. Normally, when these cult leaders take these people out to kill themselves, mass suicides and stuff, they normally die with them. But not this one. This one just gives it to them to drink and they drop down dead and, and that's it. I just think it's really sad that people don't feel as though they have the power to know what's right from wrong, to know that if they are such great Christians and they are fully fledged Christians who have been baptised, why they don't believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he forgave them of everything, past and future. So I don't understand if that is their belief as Christians, why they would hand that over to a human being to destroy them. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense at all. Because if you're a Christian, you're going to believe that, you know, <clears throat> he died for your sins. And if you're not a Christian, you're not going to worry about what demons you have anyway. <coughs> I've got something in my, <coughs> something in my throat. Um, so, 40 people went up to the pulpit. 28 of them died. 18 are seriously in hospital. Is that my maths, right? 28 and 18? Maybe not. But, I don't know. Maybe, it's, I just took the figures out of the article. Maybe it just means that even those 28 went up. And 18. Who knows? I'm not going to try and work that out. They're not my figures. Anyway, then we also have the Jonestown Massacre. I don't know how many of you remember that. 918 people died in one day. Many of them were children. 
followed by the cult um, followed by a cult leader Jim Jones to Guyana committed suicide that was in 1978 they drank cyanide laced Kool-Aid punch at the order of Jim Jones you know did they know it was cyanide I mean I I don't I can't get what I don't get is okay I don't understand not unless he says all together now one two three gulp I don't understand how they could all die at once maybe it is something like that maybe he'll say on the count of three father son and holy ghost knock back the drink and they all die 918 lives lost because they were taken in by a cult leader who they believe is going to redeem them in some way I don't know why they give so much power to humankind and then but there's pastors who are claiming that they've got supernatural powers and I've seen so many of these pastors they're whipping um, people they're touching them sexually they're when they're baptizing them they're ba dunk, dunking them under really ferociously where is the love when you have that power and you then abuse it what do you think that says of you uh, I just Apparently, in 1986, there was a mass suicide committed by seven members of a local religious cult in Japan called Junshi. Charles Manson was able to get people to kill for him on demand in the late 1960s. In 1994, Dr. Manbro and Jorit, along with 51 of their followers in the Order of the Solar Temple, which was an apocalyptic cult found in 1984 committed suicide or were murdered in Switzerland and Quebec and a further 16 more took their lives in France because their cult leader preached about impending dark disasters and the end of the world so instead of waiting to see if it happened they copped it early on March 26 1997 Applewhite and 38 other members of a cult called Heaven's Gate ate apple sauce and pudding laced with drugs and were found dead in a mass suicide in Santa Fe, California. You know, I just, it just baffles me. It baffles me seriously. I mean, especially if they're all going, following like lambs to the slaughter. That means that they've given up their whole um, control and they've handed over their um, they've handed over their rationality they've handed over their power to a third party and they're just doing what he says I don't know if it's their fixation on their guilt or the fact that they've done something wrong. It plays on their mind so much that they, and you know, these cult leaders have a way of saying, you know, I've been to some of these churches and they say, you know, you're going to be condemned and, you know, God, God is going to punish you, eternal damnation. And, you know, they really go at it. And if you're an empath or if you're somebody who's weak-willed, who believes in what they say and you, you know you take on all that guilt you take on the guilt of everyone else including yourself you're likely to believe them I do believe that the people that go out and do this they have to be um, they have to be um, very very weak-willed they probably have, they might have even been abused, vulnerable, susceptible to anything. You know, some of them, they, they think that they have demons just because they've lost their job. They think there's demons in their lives if their relationship breaks down. If, you know, if they don't have any money, if they've run out of money, if they lose, you know, they lose their homes or they lose their, you know, they, yeah, if they lose their homes. 
of their car breaks down. Any bad thing that happens to them, they blame it on a demon. And then you have people like that who come in and say, oh yes, if this happened to you, you have demons, you need to wipe out the demons. You need to get rid of the demons and the only way you're going to get rid of the demons is by doing this and by doing that. And people believe them. I remember I had a friend and she was, when I was in America, she believed in demons. She went to one of these places, I think it said £10 or $10 outside. She goes in there and they tell us that she's got evil spirits inside her. They must have dropped some black thing in, 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 in the bowl that she's supposed to pee in. The whole bowl goes black. Next thing she's telling her, oh, you've got to pay me such and such amount of money to get rid of the demons. She was paying her until she got fed up of it. But I mean, you know, nobody can stop you from believing. You really have to know yourself and know your own power. And know that these people, they're not there to exercise their power over you. That's not what they're there for. If they're not guiding you in a loving way, anything that sounds um, vicious or violent or, um, or like taking your life, or punishment, anything that to do with punishment, you stay away with those people. It's not up to them to punish you. They're human beings. Unless, of course, you've committed a crime and you're doing time. That's totally different. But no human being can punish you. And when I say human being, I mean these pastors. They make it like they've got so much power. And it's such a shame that people relinquish all their power to these people. I put, um, what makes people give away their powers? Well, it's this dependency, of course. I mean, you have abusive relationship where you find a lot of women and men, they stay in abusive relationship because they're dependent on the individual. The same thing that, you know, with churches, a lot of people, when you go to these churches, masses of them, they like, which channel you turn on to? The church full. Joyce Mayer, Austin, Tyler, what's his name? Um, TJ Jakes, TD Jakes. You've seen their churches. People are mesmerised. Mesmerised. So it's fear and abusive background. All of those things make people relinquish their power and give it over to someone else. And power is the authority to change the behaviour of others and make them do things they might not do otherwise. The trouble with power is that for a group, there is no alternative but to comply, which means that power is often achieved through fear and or coercion. You know, they, they, you know, but some, you go to some of these churches and, you know, these um, self-righteous pastors who just get married just so they can have um, sex without condemnation. You notice how they go on about, um, oh, fornication. Yeah, this is, this and this and this is fornication. I bet you, if they weren't bloody married, they would be fornicating. But they get married and make sure that they're licensed to have sex. That's why they get married, a lot of them. So they can go and preach and, and condemn people who have sex outside marriage. And some people are weak enough to think that they're going to be condemned for it. But like I said, you know, I have a different take on it anyway, because I don't, I don't believe, I believe that providing you're with one partner, and you're not having sex outside that relationship, as far as I'm concerned, that is a marriage in biblical terms. I don't think it necessarily means, no, but there's nowhere in the Bible where they said you go down an aisle, you put a ring on your finger. We don't know their definition of marriage back in the day, because I know that I've read some, one of those, um, one of those chapters where they said he took her to wife and he slept with her. He slept with her and he took her to wife. He didn't go down the aisle and marry her. So all this condemnation 
and this focus on marriage, you know, it's just to perpetuate what they want it to perpetuate. So they've got a reason to make out, to make you feel as though you're lesser than them. You're a bigger sinner than them. Don't take, don't, don't, don't even go there. Don't take it on at all. You don't owe any explanation to no human being about your life, what you do. And then a lot of this, a lot of this congregation, they go and tell the pastor their business. You mustn't do that. A lot of women, they go and tell the pastor their business. Next thing you hear them talking about it in the sermon. About all oh, this young lady, she's been, been going out to the married man and me tell her and blah, blah, blah. Don't tell pastors your business, you hear? They can't do nothing. Whatever you do is between you and God and you try to resolve it as best as you can. It's a bit like the Catholics when they go and do their confession, you know, and the person is behind the screen and stuff. But at least I think you're anonymous in that kind of situation. I, I think so, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think people lose trust in themselves and... Um, I just want to quote this, John 14, 12 states, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the work I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, which means that we're all, we all have equal power to do whatever it is. And sometimes, you know, when they say um, you heal somebody by a touch, sometimes that could be a hug, it can be a warmth, it can be anything can be making somebody laugh we all have healing powers but it's how we use them but you have we have powers to heal we have powers to destruct and normally it's what we say is destructive but you know we do have that power we don't have to hand it over to anyone else um too many religious leaders distort the power making followers feel as though it is only assigned to them. And that's what I'm saying. It's not only assigned to religious leaders. They manipulate with charismatic personalities and emotionalism. That's what I'm saying. When they're saying, I have the power to heal you, make sure because if they don't say through the power of God Almighty, you know that this is an ego trip and a money-making scheme. So you've got to be really careful. So yes, it is a bit um, of a shame that those people died again. I don't know why people fall into it, but like I said, I can't believe that they know what was in it. Uh, power is all around us, and in fact, it is within us. People don't typically think of power as something they possess. People tend to think of power as holding a particular position, politically or organisationally, standing on a certain platform, having prosperity or being popular. But power lies within us all. Andy Crouch says power is right use is power's right use is especially important for the flourishing of the vulnerable, the members of the human family, who most need others to use power well to survive and thrive. The young, the aged, the sick, the dispossessed. Power is not the opposite of servanthood, rather, a servanthood ensuring the flourishing of others is the very purpose of power. If people think that they are the ones who earn or work for power according to who they are and what they did, they will use the power for their own benefit, regardless of its effect on others. And that's what we say, you've got so many people who are power hungry. However, if people believe the power they possess was a gift, they will come to see power as something they steward for the good of the one who graciously gave them that gift. Pastors may misuse and abuse power, whether intentionally or unintentionally, but it is important to remember that power should be used for the glory of God and the good of others. And that's all I've got to say really about that. I hope you found it useful. Bye bye.